Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read you this story called The Most Magnificent Thing. Sometimes when I'm looking for new books to read, I buy them because I like the cover. And the cover of this book I thought was really interesting. It looks like this little girl is going to make something really cool. And when I was little, I used to like to make things. And as a matter of fact, as a grown up, I still do. So let's see what this story is about. The most magnificent thing. Plus, I like her puppy. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race. They eat, they explore, they relax. Sounds pretty good. She makes things and he unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. And she knows just how it will work. Can you see the drawing she has there on the easel? Looks like she's got all the parts all figured out. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Who does it look like her assistant is? <laughs> her best friend. Next, they gather their supplies. And then they set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. Oh goodness, it does not look like where she chose to get to work is out of the way, does it? She's right in the middle of the sidewalk. <laughs> the girl tinkers and hammers and measures. Well, her assistant pounces and growls and chews. Not sure how helpful he is. <laughs> when she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side and her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Oh, her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They're shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It's all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles and her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. Gosh, I give her a lot of credit for not giving up. Some of us might have already decided to say, forget it. Not this little girl. She is determined. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens and she fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. She adds antenna. pretty cool, different, magnificent things there, but it doesn't seem like anyone is quite what she's looking for. Let's see. 
She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, small, <laughs> and one even smells of stinky cheese. But none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her mind. Oh, and she gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only one thing would just work. Gosh, she's frustrated. It looks like the puppy's being a little naughty there. <laughs> Crunch! Oh, she pinched her finger. The pain starts in her finger and then it rushes up to her brain and then she explodes. It is not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. Wow, that's a really good idea. It's not much help at first, but before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad, gets pushed out of her head. Looks like the balloons made her happy as well as the nice lady in the bakery looks like she's giving her a cookie. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly. Tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. <laughs> He's chasing a little squirrel out of the way, it looks like. This is a perfect thing to ward off bears, the man says. This will stop that leak, says the lady. And the little kid in the back says, this one's all wet. And she's working away. The afternoon fades into evening and finally she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little to the left and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. The end. Oh my goodness, I loved that story. What was your favorite part? 
I think the thing I admired most about the little girl is that she kept on trying. And then the part I really liked was how when she got really mad and frustrated, her assistant, also known as her best friend and her dog, convinced her to walk away from her work. Go take a walk, take a little break. Sometimes it's exactly what we need to do, especially if we're trying to create something. Things don't always go as planned, but they seem to work out in the end, don't they? I really love the fact that the most magnificent thing had to do with a way for her and her best friend to ride around town together. It's just great. Anyhow, I hope you guys love that story as much as I did. And I also hope you come back soon so I can read to you again. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. Bye for now.